What's up, everybody? I'm back at this place again. In my last few videos, I worked on that chiller right there. Well, now I'm working on this one. So, what I found is the refrigerant saturation temperature. That is measuring the saturated temp coming into the compressor. I found that one reading off by about 8 to 11 degrees. Go figure. It's a train. So what I'm doing here is I closed off the discharge valve, put a gauge on to monitor pressure. I then front seated the suction service valve which will block off to the line set, leaving the compressor open. I have a gauge here monitoring the pressure in the compressor. And I'm, the reason why I'm, I have the two gauges here is to make sure that this valve is actually holding and working. Because if it's leaking by, what I'm doing isn't gonna work and then I'm gonna have to recover the whole charge, which I don't wanna do. So this, this gauge right here is compressor, same as that one. That gauge is on the suction through the EVAP side, right? Hopefully you're following along with me. So front seated, discharge closed off, which basically isolates the compressor. So then you have the discharge line, which goes up, goes through the oil separator, then goes up through the condenser coil. This is the path. Take you back here. So then you come back here. I front seated the liquid service valve, which will block off the flow to here. I am recovering from the port where the saturation is so that sensor right there that is the saturated refrigerant sensor which is after the EEB right so you're following the refrigeration circuit here's your liquid line comes down comes into the filter dryer hits the EEB and then starts flashing off into the evaporator and goes back over there sucks into the compressor same as every other refrigeration system but what I'm doing is since I have to replace that sensor over there what I'm gonna do is try to get the evaporator side down to about 5 5 psi and do a hot swap a hot swap on that sensor um, I'm using my subcooler again, and I'm just recovering some refrigerant. I know this is a small tank and it's a big circuit, but I'm just recovering some, some refrigerant. So when this tank is full, and if I'm still, up, obviously, and I probably will be still above five PSI, uh, I will then switch over and recover out of the saturated line in and then I will actually start dumping it into the liquid line and pushing the rest of the refrigerant into the condenser and it will eventually block itself off at the discharge over there I probably didn't have to close the discharge but I said oh well what the heck you know I don't want to I want to make sure I don't get any liquid or anything else back in there so yeah that's what I'm doing I'm just gonna recover as much as I can into here just so I'm not pumping all that refrigerant into the condenser and you know increasing the, the pressure on it I was able to vacuum this down to about 65 microns so she's nice and clean and uh, did a decay test on the tank and she held so yeah that's what we're doing And again, I'm using my subcooler here to keep the pressure down. I could pack more refrigerant in the tank. And then when I am recovering what's left out of the saturated line, I am gonna go through 
my subcooler again, again to keep the pressure down, and I'm, then I'm gonna push the rest of it up into the liquid line, do a hot swap on these sensors, open everything back up, bada bing, bada boom. I am happy to report that the suction service valve is holding. That's good news because I was worried about it. If it didn't hold, man, I was going to have to recover the whole charge and I'd rather just get the repair done. I mean, so be it if that was what was going to happen, you know, whatever, but it is freaking holding. And uh, yeah, subcooler's going full bore over here. I did the math and I could put about 45 pounds into this tank. And I figured either way, even if the EXV isn't closed right now, the refrigerant's only going to come up to this valve and stop. Um, I might throw another gauge on there just to make sure that uh, it's not pulling down. But uh, you, can, you can see from my hose, she's sweating. But so far, so good. Got 20 pounds in. The subcooler kicks butt. All right, I filled up the uh, recovery cylinder here. I got 44 and a half pounds in this thing, so I have now switched over and I'm coming, same thing, coming out of my saturated line into the recovery machine out of the recovery machine into the subcooler out of the subcooler and into the liquid line and I'm just gonna push the rest of the gas into the liquid line can in condenser um, I, again, I have this blocked off over here, so that way I have no chance of pushing liquid back into the compressor, which I definitely don't want to do. And, uh, yeah, it's working good. Now you can see about 105 pounds in the compressor. And we're on 50 pounds on the evaporator side. Yes, I know that gauge is 410, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just using it for pressure, not for anything else. But so far, so good. Just got to get her down to about 5 PSI and hot swap. Hot swap that sensor there. Put all the gas back in. Get it done up, which uh, this one has the old controls on it. So this is 22, which is saturated evaporator refrigerant temp. And I am on circuit two and it's saying it's 44 to 43 degrees, which at 40 PSI is not correct. There is absolutely no way. I'm sorry, I'm at 50. At 50 PSI, R22 is not 40 something degrees. Uh, let me go to the right here. Uh, sorry, the saturated. Oh, that is, sorry, I am on the saturated. Let's go to the compressor suction. So compressor suction, refrigerant temp, it's saying it's 72 degrees. Well, there's no way. So there's circuit one, which is on that side. Yeah, that's not right. So anyways, yeah, this is, this has got the old controls. I mean, they have put the, uh, some of the newer boards in here, but still using the old, old stuff. Yeah, 
And yeah, just keep at it. Another day in HVAC land.